What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So most of you guys know we're having some issues with the green truck. I explained it a couple videos ago where we're having some warm restart issues and I think I've narrowed it down to the injectors and it is a very common problem with this motor. When you turn the truck off, the injector or at least one injector will internally leak fuel down into the intake manifold and essentially the motor and flood it. So then when you go to restart it, it'll be flooded, it'll crank for a while, and then it'll finally start. And it has a little bit of a miss right when it starts up, and then it completely smooths out and runs perfect. And also cold starts are 100% perfect too. There's no issues at all with cold starts. So what I'm going to do is get these injectors out, send them in and have them rebuilt. But before we get to work pulling these out, I wanna show you guys what it sounds like and what it does. And also I wanna get it warmed up so that when I pull the intake manifold off, I can visually see if there is fuel leaking down into the manifold. So we are completely cold right now. I'll show you how it starts normally. Fires right up, no hesitation at all. So I'm gonna go get it warmed up. We'll let it sit for 15 minutes or so, and then I'll show you the warm restart issue. All right, we're warmed up, been about 15 minutes, so let's see if it does it now. So you can see there, that wasn't even as bad as it sometimes is. So you can see it took a lot longer and it usually even takes longer than that. I just went and cruised around the field a little bit. It got the temp gauge up, but I really didn't heat soak it. So if you get it really warm, it does it a lot worse than that. And it takes a lot more cranking to get it to start. So let's get in the shop, start tearing this intake off and see if we can see any fuel down in the actual intake manifold. All right, I got this manifold off a little bit. It's still got hot coolant in it, so I don't want to pull those cooling lines off the idle air control valve, but if I put the camera down here, I don't know if you can hear this. If you can hear that hissing noise. Sure sounds like one of them ejectors is leaking. So I'm gonna let it cool down just a little bit so I can pull those coolant lines off of the throttle body and then we'll pull the lower plenum off and see what cylinder and what injector is leaking. Well, I got the lower plenum off now and that hissing noise is coming from cylinder six. So the very far back cylinder, which from my research, number three on the back on this side, number six on the back, on the driver's side are the two injectors that are most commonly bad. And I think that's because there's more heat back there from the exhaust. And a few of the ports have some dampness from fuel, but it's hard to tell. It's not like pouring fuel in or anything. So either way, I'm gonna redo these injectors. So let's pull the injectors out. We'll ship them out and have them rebuilt.
Alright guys, got these injectors out so you can see a lot of these seals are very in very bad shape. This one didn't even stay on the injector. You can see it's about torn in half. I got some bad news for you guys. So these three injectors are the three that I replaced. These are OEM. I know they're OEM. They have a part number here and underneath the part number I think it says 9EH. Apparently that's a testing lot number and only OEM injectors have that. And then they also have a marking here that says Anin or something. These injectors that I pulled out from underneath the manifold have no lot number. You can see there, if you can see that in the camera, very small print. And then this side, there's no markings at all. So these are just like the other ones I pulled out, cheap knockoffs. I thought they were OEM. They looked OEM, but obviously I couldn't really see because they're underneath the whole plenum. So I will not be using these injectors. I'm not sending them in for them to just send them back and say they're crap because that's what they are, they're junk. So I'll probably just have to buy a whole brand new set. And I know you guys are gonna say, you should have done it right the first time when I swapped these three out, but a subscriber sent these over for free. It was more of a test to see if the injectors were bad and just changing these three injectors made an insane improvement at how it runs. So I think once we get all six brand new flow tested injectors, this thing should run like brand new. So we'll get back out here in, I don't know, a week whenever we get the new injectors in and we'll get this thing back together. Look what finally showed up guys. Two weeks later, FedEx had these things running all over the US, but we finally got them in. So we got our injectors complete with seals, everything ready to go. So like I said, these are from Motorsport or Motor West Performance. So these aren't the factory brown injectors that come in these trucks. He explained they were some they were out of a different Toyota of some sort, but they're just a lot better injector and they flow the same and everything as the stock injectors. They're just a lot more reliable. So what we got to do is get the little lube packet they sent, grease up the O-rings. We'll get these injectors in. We'll get the fuel rails on. And I bought a couple other things too, so you're going to need intake gaskets, two of them, and they are the same for the upper and lower plenum. I bought a actually a whole kit for the PCV valve. I already put the new one in the valve cover, but here's the hose. And then I bought this pack of the washers for all the fuel lines. So all these are going to be brand new. Shouldn't have any leaks, so let's get to work getting these injectors in. Thank you. 
All right guys, we're back together, 100% ready to go. Let's fire it up. We'll have to go for a drive, get it warmed up, completely warmed up. And like I said, the issues I was having was, you know, 10, 15 minutes after it's sitting, when it's fully warmed up, it'd have a hard restart. So let's go get it warmed up, see how it runs, and see if that hot start issue is any better. right off the bat it's already sounding a lot smoother running a lot smoother and quieter and another thing I noticed is on this truck in particular it was idling at like 2,000 rpms when it was cold and it took forever to actually idle down to even close to a thousand and you can see right now we're at like 1200 rpm so that's a lot better it's actually what it's supposed to be at so I'll get this thing out go down the road get it warmed up and see if that hot start issue is any better All right guys, here's the moment of truth. Look at that, fires right up, no issues. There it is guys, the injector's fixed, the hot start issue, fires right up, no hesitation at all. It honestly runs a lot smoother when I was driving it and feels like it has a little bit more power too, so can't complain about that. So I'm also getting a lot of questions about washing the Raptor liner. People think the mud just kind of gets caked into all the texture and doesn't really wash off. I know on my flatbed, I haven't had any issues. I just pressure wash it. I don't even scrub it at all. So let's pressure wash this thing. Let's see how it cleans up with no scrubbing at all. Just pressure wash it and leave it. So here's a quick look at it before we wash it. You can see, not super dirty, but I was driving it in some not so great roads. And I guess the back is a lot more dirty. So let's pressure wash it and see how it cleans up with just pressure washer, no scrubbing, no drying, nothing. Just pressure wash it.
There it is guys, so like I said, just pressure washed it, didn't scrub it at all, and honestly it looks really, really clean. You probably could, if it's really dirty, you probably could scrub it and get it perfect. And also washed up the bay a little bit. Had a lot of sanding dust from actually when I painted the outside and I still hadn't washed it, so clean that up. Bay is looking good, so this thing's running really nice. I'm still gonna have to get some miles on it, make sure there's no more bugs to work out. Something like this, there's always little bugs to work out and then I still gotta figure out a fan shroud. I have one from, I think the 3.0, but it wasn't really fitting, so I'll have to figure out something for fan shroud. Other than that though, running and driving really good. Well, that's a wrap for this one, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you need injectors, go check out Motor West Performance, I believe. I'll have their link down in the description box. One of the cheapest places I found for injectors and they have a very good reputation. And like I said, they use the Denso injectors, which they say are a lot better than the factory brown ones. I can't remember what brand they were. I think they were Azen brand, but according to them, the Denso injectors are a lot better and a lot more reliable too. So definitely go check them out if you're in the market. We've been driving the 4Runner a little bit and I may also need a set of injectors on that. Kind of the same issue with a warm start. I'm gonna go through and do a full tune up and see if that fixes it, if not, Probably end up doing injectors on that one too, and I'm gonna buy them from the same place. So this truck is pretty close to being done. Like I said, I wanna get some miles on it and work out all the little bugs in it, but for the most part, I think we're pretty much done with this build. You guys definitely need to stay tuned on the channel though. I have an exciting build coming. Super excited to get started on it, but I wanna tidy up all the loose ends with this truck and a few things to do on the 4Runner as well before I dive into a whole nother project. But that is coming very soon, so stay tuned for that. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.